Okay, this is a case study that we did uh, several years ago, and I think it's uh, poignant from the fact that uh, it, it proves or proved to us that at the middle of the season, things have changed dramatically for teams, and teams have, have become one thing that they may not have wanted to, or they may have become what they wanted to at that point in time in the season. But we realize now that uh, it's like a game. There may be four quarters to a season. And you got to pay attention to the development of the human side of it, the human element, uh, not just the task element and the, the strategy element. Uh, so what did we encounter? We encountered a volleyball, a high school volleyball team that very successful program, but success never really brought them over the hump. They would catch away, maybe win one game or one 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 match, and, and then get to the second round of the state tournament and lose. And this pattern had gone on for several years. And so they're looking for a way to, you know, get through that to get over the hump. Well, what we do is we came in and we said, let's let's figure this out. What's going on? Where are you guys today? So what we did is we used a, we rated their effectiveness together as a team. And so what we use is a rate your teammate tool. And we uncovered that the the, the team had gone had been fractured in many different ways. There were clicks. There were uh, the, the people that, that there was an in group out group uh, dynamic going on. And so we knew at that point we had a problem. Uh, we also used the, the explore the patterns of role behavior and role leadership, which we've shared. We're going to sh we've shared with you, uh, or we're going to share with you soon, on the eight roles of team leadership. What we found was that very simply, nobody was really nobody really had a leadership persona, and so there was not a whole lot of uh, um, leadership put on by or put together by the, the the players. They just kind of followed along and went along, and and uh, you know were more apathetic towards issues that they could have solved and that relationships that they might have made, instead they didn't do those things. And so uh, we were finding the team in bad, in a bad situation. In fact, when we came to them mid-season, they were on a four-game uh, four losing streak. Um, and so that was, you know, con you know the, the consequences of that simply, you know, uh, spiraling out of control and losing comp players, losing confidence in, in one another. And then we started to look at the culture. We use a, tr a culture of trust score, our culture of trust scorecard, and again, it, it kind of showed really pretty simply that the culture was negative. The culture was uh, soloist, meaning that the, the players looked after themselves and nobody else. And if they did look after anybody else, it was just one one friend, you know, one one sister in this case. Okay. And so what we did, and just we want to make sure that you understand that what we do at the academy is we triangulate all data. So we try to get, the, in this case, we get a self perspective, we get a teammate perspective, and we get a coach perspective when we're starting to look at the, the rate your teammate. What is my teammate? How is my teammate performing as a teammate, as a team member? So the challenge that we had was the team member accountability. So they did not have responsibilities, so how would we then say we can ask them to be accountable to the team? So we realized real quickly, we had to get that dual uh, aspect going, responsibilities and, and accountability. So we implemented the eight roles and they started to develop the personas of the leaders. And by doing that, we were changing the climate, not the culture, because initially you change the climate and then the culture follows. And so we were changing the climate to a positive teammate oriented uh, you know, environment, which they thought they had, they did not have. And they came up with a change motto, which we would encourage. And so what it was, it was a change of heart. And so they called everything heart, you know. So they have a change of heart. They're, they're changing their mindset so that they, they now know that they have to focus on their teammates, their team members. And, and once we started breaking some barriers down, we started seeing a huge difference. So they would have a heart attack. A game would be a heart attack. Let's unleash the heart attack on, on our opponent. Uh, you know, when somebody needed to talk to somebody with a little bit of a verve, a little bit of, hey, we need to get you back on the straight and narrow, it was called a heart to heart, right? All right. And then they used to call it a heartbeat, or they'd call it a heartbeat. How's your heart beating today? What's the heartbeat of the team? You know, they wanted to make sure that everything uh, coalesced around this idea of a changing of heart. So you can kind of see that in a, in a nutshell that what we're trying to do is, is you know, transform the team that was just focused on task, strategy, and transaction, rather than transformation, relationships, and, and harmony. Uh, did we succeed? Yes, we succeeded. In fact, the team went to the state finals, lost in the state finals, but they made it through 
the farthest they've ever made it through. Now, nobody would have ever predicted that early on in the season, nor at the midpoint of the season, because the team just did not come together, as, gel together as a team. So the things that we do, that, that we, we study, uh, remember it's teamwork intelligence, so once we learn teamwork intelligence, they're able to implement teamwork intelligence into their overall program. So, take it to heart. If you want to study your team, I would encourage you to get a third party uh, to come out and, and study your team. Uh, we'll do it gladly. And what happens is it gives you an avenue or a, a, a pathway for the second half of the season in this case, or the second quarter. Um, just some way, shape, or form that we have to you know, incrementally show through time. So what happens here, and let me just make sure that you understand that even if you're implementing this program today, what's more likely is this time on the x-axis and commitment on the y-axis. So what we tend to see is a lot of build up here early on in the season, but then as the season wears on, it was, as the games come, a lot, come around, the focus then becomes on the game and not so much on the team. The team starts to drift. When, they, when the players start to drift away from one another, it doesn't matter what you're teaching on the task side, it's going to be suboptimal. So I, I encourage you to be willing to study your team all season long. Make it a capsule, right? It's a case study. Okay, so keep the conversation going, and we'll see you at the whiteboard.